Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan battle video. So recently, I've noticed a lot of people on social media have been expressing their outrage towards Bandai and Akatsuki for certain events that have transpired in the recent past. Specifically, a lot of this anger is targeted towards the new Extreme Z area event as well to a lesser extent at the fact that the featured LR for part 2 of the celebration is not the instant transmission Goku, the Bye Guys Goku that a lot of people had been speculating and hoping for, but rather the LR androids. And I'll talk about all that in a second, but my main goal, my primary goal for this video is to take a comprehensive or holistic view at the 300 million download celebration as a whole and uh, go through each of the events that we got, give you guys my opinions, possibly a little review, and maybe convince some people that are very angry right now that while there were definite cons or things that they could have done better for this celebration, I believe the pros do outweigh them, and overall this celebration has been a very solid one and uh, possibly one of the better ones that we have ever received in this game up to this point. So. Uh, of course, before we get started, I want to make it extra clear that everything that I express in this video is my own personal opinion, and you guys are definitely free to disagree with me as much as you want. And if you guys do have some differing opinions from the ones that I express in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, and I would love to read them. So without further ado, guys, let's jump into part one of the 300 million download celebration, which was called the Fierce Confrontation Campaign. And I would like to remind people that before the campaign even started, we did get that live stream where they gave us some previews of the upcoming events. And I believe from the live stream itself, courtesy of the skinny man who broke all those tiles, um, we got 50 dragon stones. I mean, there was also that quiz thing, but mostly the skinny man with the tiles. Uh, we got 50 stones for both global and JP before anything even started. So that was an awesome little gift they gave us. But on top of that, I scroll down a little bit, uh, there was a premium movie, which is nice. There was some login bonuses, some special missions, pretty standard stuff for celebrations. And the first notable thing is this download celebration ticket banner. And I know there are a lot of differing opinions about this. Some people loved it, some people hated it, and some people are just kind of neutral about it, which is pretty much where I'm at. But the way I like to think about this is that these tickets are completely free, right? I see them as a bonus. And there's something that Bandai doesn't really have to give us if they didn't want to. So for that reason, I generally don't complain too much about the contents of these banners. But even with that said, I thought it was a pretty solid banner. It had everything up until the previous download celebration, at least on Global, with the transforming Goku and Frieza, with Jiren, UI Goku, uh, full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku, and so on and so forth. So I had a lot of the top tier Dokkan Fest exclusive units and on top of that they included uh was it f 10 I think 10 unfeatured LRs which a lot of people also pulled with their tickets and this is coming from the perspective of someone that really didn't get too lucky on this banner um in like about 250 to 300 tickets I didn't really pull much that I could actually use even for dupes but with that said I thought the banner was okay I think JP players are a little bit more justified in being upset because they had more Dokkan Fest units come out in the last year, right? But overall, I'm okay with it. Um, I think this one's just a bit like, it's neutral. It's, it's not that good, it's not that bad. And uh, let's move on from there. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next thing is this tile breaking contest. It was the Global versus JP contest. And uh, I actually like this one a lot. So every day there was one new stage and to clear all the missions, it was actually not too difficult and for doing it you got seven stones per day for a total of 35 stones right there and of course the winner got the cell which was jp and uh, global got the the booty hercule which i was personally very happy about now of course um they are very similar cards as far as leader skill goes and passive goes but you know going by usability the cell definitely is much better because hercule just doesn't really fit well on any teams his links are very bad so there's that, but just for the novelty of it, I really enjoyed the Hercule, so uh, this was pretty cool too. Of course, 35 stones is always nice. And then we have this eat up and fight mission thing, and this was absolutely amazing, guys. It was just basically, I think it was one mission per day, and all you had to do was clear three stages, I'm pretty sure. Now, my memory's a little bit fuzzy, it's been a little while, but I'm pretty sure it was just like, clear three stages, and you got 10 dragon stones for that, and this lasted for seven days, and we got a total of 70 
dragon stones for it so this was amazing i absolutely love this thing hopefully they bring it back more i mean people were asking for that launch event that gave us 10 stones a day right so this was basically the launch event but in the form of missions so Either way, it's 70 free stones. And then next up, we have, of course, the big thing for part one, which was the dual token fest. And as much as people complained about the restrictions of both cards, uh, they both ended up being very, very good cards. I do agree that the Gohan is better than the Cell, or the Cell right here. But even the Cell is still really good in his own right, especially for harder events in the game that require a good tank. Um, and, you know, if you take him into Super Battle Road or the new... Uh, infinite Dragon Ball history event, you can pretty much get both of their transformations off guaranteed, not guaranteed, but very, very likely, and uh, get those, uh, what do you call it, active skills as well eventually too. So um, they both have their uses, they're both still top tier units in this game, and you know, I was one of those people that complained a lot about the restrictions too, but they're still amazing. And also, uh, one thing to keep in mind, of course, is their banners. I think everybody agrees that their banners were very good. They both had very, very top tier banners, two of the best banners we have ever received, ever seen in this game. So there's also that. And uh, yeah, just overall a very good Dual Dual Confess, guys. I have no complaints about this. I am actually very, very happy about them. Um, aside from the fact that I can't pull Gohan, like to save my life, I am currently 2,600 stones deep without a Gohan. Just wanted to put that out there in the video. Okay, next up. We have the Dragonstone sale, which is pretty standard. Um, for some weird reason, this threw me off a little bit. The LR, the Int LR Gohan is here, right? And I looked back in an old video where I talked about this news release in the game, and this LR Gohan image was not there. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. Is it is it a mistake by Deep Z Space? Or was this updated later on or something like that? I'm not really sure this kind of threw me off. I, I don't know if it's like referring to the fact that LR Gohan will be available through a purple stone for like when the new packs come out or when the banner when the Android's banner comes out or something or was it just is it just ran? I don't really know. I don't know what's going on. Why is LR Gohan here? Yo, if you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. Clarify this for me, but we're gonna move on because I don't have any information about it right now. Um maybe maybe it's just referring to the fact that he's gonna get the revamp for his ultra super attack or something like that. I don't really know because this is part one news so this wasn't even announced at the time i don't know anyways moving on uh we have the red dragon stone which is pretty standard for major celebrations but it's always nice to pick up one of these guys especially because of how good a lot of them are like the str gogeta the janemba is insane the super saiyan 3 vegeta is insane super saiyan 3 goku is still extremely good so that's always a nice feature um purple dragon stone i mean 120 leads and these two guys I mean, if you guys are missing them, I guess it could be kind of exciting, but overall, I'm not overly thrilled about this, but it's also just another thing that comes with every major celebration, so not much to talk about there. And then we have, uh, well, Global got this um, cell event for the first time, JP had it for a little while, and then both sides, I believe, got this uh, cell games event brand new for the celebration, and uh, the combination of these two gave us a good amount of stones, and also, of course, the ability to get the uh, STR Vegeta and Trunks, and Tech Goku and Gohan, both of which are excellent, excellent units, even before their EZAs. Of course, they get a lot better after the EZA, and uh, we'll talk about the events that you need to do to do that in a second, of course, when we get to part two. Um, this event was absolutely awesome. The Chamber of Spirit and Time is an absolutely awesome event. Even though you can only do it twice, you got a total of 10 Elder Kais and also uh, 10 of the new training locations, which are really, really good. And one thing that maybe not a lot of people would care about or even know is that when you clear this event for the first time, or like each time you clear it, you get a crazy amount of EXP, guys. Like enough to take a TUR from level one to level 120 in one shot. So if you guys have some units that you need to level up and you don't want to you want to save some training items and stuff like that take a lot of low level units into one of your runs and watch them all get to max level it's pretty awesome so there's that really great event right there and another big thing of course is the 10 new super battle road stages which if you guys can beat um is another 50 50 dragon stones i believe because it's five for each oh 55 actually so it's uh one stone for the first clear 
and then you also get five from the mission so i think it's 55 stones in total and of course there's also that new l r goku and bulma which are which are amazing and uh, we both got new boss rushes for both global and jp um i mean global got an old one that jp already had but it's still new for global so that was 35 stones right there and then jp got another new one i believe it was stage nine which is another 35 stones so both sides got 35 more farmable stones and once again boss rush has never been that difficult and uh, for that reason pretty much everyone who has been playing this game for a little while should be able to um, get those 35 stones so so far guys just adding up all the events that gave out stones we already had a couple hundred stones including the live stream stones too and uh, we're gonna get to the top grossing as well so uh, this is for the uh, tickets for the banner and uh, we got the top grossing here 50 stones for hitting uh, top grossing in seven countries right so we got that both sides got that but on top of that we also got some bonuses um i don't remember if there was a second top grossing but we did get a couple of bonuses and i think in total as far as bonuses go uh, global got somewhere around 130 to 150 and jp got around 200 or a little bit more than that and of course for that fact people are complaining that you know there's a favoritism towards jp and i mean that's kind of a reality of being a global player you can't really be surprised at this point so yeah jp did get a few more stones as far as the top grossing and bonuses go um but one thing i do want to remind people is that global got some extra discounts for the first three multis for the uh dual token fest right and if you combine those savings that's about like 60 stones i think like if you include the discounts for three multis for both banners it's like 60 ish stones so if you add that to the total of compensation or if you include that as part of the compensation it's actually kind of even between global and jp since jp actually did not get those extra discounts their multis just started at 50 stones each right so that that's something right um, but either way we, we both got a lot of stones essentially for top grossing and bonuses and like thank yous and stuff like that and there's the Elder Kai banner, um, it is what it is, not, not much to say about that. And a new Ultimate Clash, that's another 40-ish uh, stones, I believe. And uh, these banners are always nice. Um, I like the fact that you get a lot of orbs for doing the multis, but especially for the tech banner with all those OP uh, LRs in there, like the Goku Black, the, the Broly, the Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and the Goku and Frieza. Um, I think it's pretty good value, but that's, that's just me, of course. I've never pulled a LR off one of these multis, but your chances are way higher than your average banner. So uh, yeah, these are nice. And having the hidden potential event open on the weekends, um, all of them open on the weekends for two days is really good. And uh, I believe that is everything for, oh, there's also the returning campaign. So basically, based on the number of people that came back to Dokkan during this period, I think we got all the steps or all the rewards and it was something like, I don't know, another 20, 30 stones, maybe? I don't remember, it's been a while, but we got some decent stones for that too. So uh, just for part one alone, guys, we add everything up, including the bonuses, including the thank yous, including everything. That's a couple hundred stones, maybe three, three, 400 stones possibly. I didn't do a comprehensive count, I apologize. But uh, the point is that the, the celebration has been pretty damn good. Even the LRs that people were complaining a lot about with the restrictions, there were also really, really good units, man. I mean, as, as annoying as it is sometimes that they can't transform very easily, uh, nobody is complaining that they pulled Gohan. Nobody is complaining they pulled Cell. Um, the only people that are complaining are the ones that didn't pull them, right? Like me or Gohan. But anyways, they're good. Um, and uh, everything else has been pretty damn good. So that is part one, guys. Overall, very, very solid. And then we move on to part two, where a lot of the controversy 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 has um, been started has been uh, targeted at this event was called the epic clash campaign oh and one thing that is not going to be included in the news is the uh, raid boss perfect cell that we have information about but they haven't really officially announced it in the game so essentially it's going to be a perfect cell raid where or extreme z battle event where we can get the medals to dokkan awake or to extreme z awaken man my words are getting all mixed up right now to extreme z awaken the str super saiyan 2 gohan and 
uh, for the first 30 levels, we get 30 stones. And if you go beyond from level 30, 31 to 100, you can get a ton of orbs over the course of those levels for a total of enough metals or enough orbs to rainbow one unit of each type or very close to. And uh, you can also get, I think, 28 Sleepy Kai's. So it's just a ton of rewards. Really, really good um, for people that need orbs. But I mean, everybody needs orbs, right? At the end of the day. So. Uh, it's gonna be awesome and moving on to the first major campaign here we have the dende new guardian dragon ball hunt campaign and in the first day alone guys we cleared five out of the seven missions for this campaign and got 25 stones and we are very close to clearing this the, the last two as well and for the last two we get five stones for each of the missions for each of the dragon balls but also another bonus 20 stones for getting all of them right so that's another 30 stones that are on the way very very soon i'd say sometime around either tonight or tomorrow we should be getting those 30 stones from the Dragon Ball Hunt campaign, and it's only been one day, I mean, one, one and a half days since the campaign started, so that's pretty awesome. And then we have this evolution of the ultimate life form, so this is the event that's leading up to the, the Perfect Cell raid, and one level comes out every single day for five days, and once we clear all five of them, the Perfect Cell raid will become available, and uh, each level, I believe, gives you three stones as well, so that's 15 stones from, from this countdown mission, countdown event alone. And then we come to the very, very controversial Extreme Z area event where you get the medals to Dokkan Awaken, the STR Vegeta and Trunks, and the Tech Goku and Gohan. And I will just quickly cover what I feel, give you guys my opinions, my two cents about this event. And generally speaking, they're they're fairly negative. I don't love this event, I'll be honest. I don't hate it either. I don't hate it, but I don't love it for a number of reasons that have been covered by a lot of people already. Number one, it's very restrictive. You can only bring, um, you can only choose from a pool of like 12 units or something like that, and you have to bring at least four of them, like for sure. Four of them are required, and then the remaining remaining two you can choose from like this pool of units. It's very limited. And um, number two is that as far as rewards go, it's kind of lacking because we're only getting, I think, a total of six stones from this event itself. Obviously, uh, there are some missions from the campaign that give you some more stones, but that's more so part of the campaign as opposed to the event itself. So from the event itself, you're only getting six stones. Uh, it does require stamina, which is not something that we've ever had to do to Extreme Z uh, awaken a unit. I mean, at least for the first time, obviously, if you're re-clearing Extreme Z battles, uh, you have to use stamina. But for the first clears for like the initial, like the main units you want to talk on or Extreme Z awaken, it's never really required stamina in the past. And uh, lastly, it's just really boring, guys. Like, just be honest. And this is coming from a guy who really had no trouble clearing it, I'll be honest. Um, you know, I had all the units that were part of the pool, and I just used my incel as a leader and uh, got through it no problem. It was, it was just fine. It took me about an hour to do both of them. But for that entire hour, I was just really, really bored, guys. Like, I don't know about you, but generally speaking, I enjoy taking on new Extreme Z battles because I like the fact that we're going through the levels, they're going higher and higher, and every single level, the boss gets a little bit stronger each time. Um, but this one was just the same thing over and over again, right? You're just running the same stage, the same boss over and over again. They don't get any stronger, any weaker, it just stays the same. And uh, it's just a, a boring grind. And of course, that is the name of the game. And I'm not really surprised about that but um, I wish it was different, right? I wish it was a regular Extreme Z battle as I'm sure most people do. But at the same time, like I said, I don't hate it. It's obvious that they're trying something new and um, maybe based on the reaction of this one, uh, if they have or come out with Extreme Z areas in the future, they'll do different things. A couple of recommendations I would make if I were to like talk to like a Bandai spy or something like that is uh, just tell them, you know, like maybe make the restrictions less restrictive <laughs> that's the only word that comes to mind right now but less restrictive give us a bigger pool of units um allow us to maybe use units that have better synergies or just like have give us a better leader we can use as well in the pool right because the team is just that we, that we can run even if you're running the best team right now is just really not that good right and it's really boring to use so at least allow us to have some more flexibility with the team building and uh, maybe not allow not maybe not require stamina either like have it be zero stamina for 
each of the levels. Um, of course, there are a lot of people out there that are defending this event, and I can see it from their perspective too. Overall, I'm not too angry at it, but I can see where people are coming from, all right? So, um, like I said, my overall sentiment about this event is it's not great. <laughs> it's really not great, um, but it's not as terrible, I think, as some people make it out to be. And you can actually clear this with a 100% free-to-play team. Let me be clear, all right? It's difficult. It's a challenge. But you don't need the incel as a leader to, to clear this event, right? If you have the LR androids, you can even actually clear it with a lead, um, a tech Goku and Gohan lead or something like that. And uh, it's totally doable. It's just going to take some patience and a lot more time, obviously. But I think that's essentially what they were going for with this event. They didn't want people just to blast through it super easily. Although if you do have the right units, you still can do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm fairly okay with it. I don't love it, but it's not super, super terrible like a lot of people make it out to be. And I do hope they make some changes in the future for future Extreme Z areas. So that's not as restrictive and not as boring as this one was. That, that's my opinion. Like I said, you guys are free to disagree with me. Let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about this event. And uh, let's move on to the Infinite Dragon Ball History event now. So for this one, I know there was some disappointment as well, but I honestly enjoyed this event quite a bit when I was running it. Of course, it only took one run for each of the uh, different levels, but of course, there's also going to be more in the future, right? I, I like what the I, I, I like basically what I saw from the first couple levels and the precedent that they set, and I'm excited for future ones. But uh, even the current levels that we got, I mean. I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun. It's basically an easier version of the Legendary Goku event, but it's not so easy where like everyone can just clear it first try. Like some 10 people are still going to struggle with it. And uh, there are still going to be some situations where RNG just screws you and you can die from like a you know random super or something like that. So uh, I'm okay with it. I enjoyed it. It's also a good amount of stones from that too. I think we get uh, 40, 40 something stones or something like that for clearing both levels with the the specific like requirements like the teams and stuff like that so uh, I like this event a lot can't wait for more stages and then the other thing that some people are kind of are up in arms about that are angry about is this top legendary summon by the way it's called top legendary summon because there are going to be two non Dokkan Fest LRs featured number one is the uh, Android 17 18 and 16 should be in there as well when they're fully awakened and um, number two is the int LR Gohan who by the way is going to be getting an ultra a super attack re refresh or update and uh, I believe most people are hoping that he's finally gonna be moving his legs when he walks as opposed to just being a JPEG that bounces up and down right so it remains it remains to be seen uh, what kind of change they actually make for LR Gohan but he is gonna be featured on this banner along with the LR androids and um, I'm pretty okay with this too man I gotta say Okay, here's the thing, I might be a little bit biased because I do love the androids, especially Android 18, but overall I just love Android 17, I love Android 16, I really love Android 18, and I just gotta have this card. I know a lot of people were hoping for the instant transmission Goku, but let's be real, that, that was never something that was guaranteed. It was something that a lot of people were speculating, but it was pure speculation. It was just that people were guessing, essentially that it was going to be the instant transmission Goku based off the fact that we had some unused Goku art from part one and um, you know it would fit in with the theme of the celebration and people just really wanted it but at the same time there was nothing that officially confirmed we were going to get an instant transmission Goku so like I said it was pure speculation and on top of that the androids do fit the theme of the celebration as well and we don't even know how good they are right we don't know any details about this unit yet so it could turn that turn out that these androids are really really good like as OP as uh, LR Goku and Frieza were when they were first released and actually still are they're still one of the best hardest hitting units in the game right so I suspect they're gonna be on that level we just gotta be patient and wait for more details to come out but um, regardless, like I said, I might be a little bit biased. I really like this. I am super, super excited for it. Uh, probably more hype than I would have been for an instant transmission Goku. I know, unpopular opinion. Some people just got mad at me, but that's my opinion, man. I love the androids, so I'm okay with this. And uh, like I said, they could be really, really good. So just be patient and wait to see their animations, their stats, their passive, their leader skill. All that good stuff okay so that is the banner right there next up is another elder kai banner 
it's whatever. Okay, I don't think I paid enough attention or gave enough time to this revamp of the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, LR Super Saiyan 2 Gohan uh, Super Attack animation. Um, this is something, if you guys are newer players, this is something that people have been asking for for a very, very long time. I personally never thought this day would come because it's been such a meme for such a long time. And I just thought like, and I would never listen. But as it turns out, they have been listening and they are actually revamping this animation. I'm sure it's going to look amazing um, and I just can't wait guys. I am super, super stoked for this. So if for nothing else, I think this LR Gohan revamp is something worth getting excited about for part two if you guys aren't hyped for the androids or were disappointed about this event or hate this event and stuff like that. Um, that revamp is pretty huge guys. Anyways, Elder Kai Banner, Dragonstone Sale, and once again, um, you know, it, it was really weird that the LR Gohan was part of the picture for the Dragonstone discounts for like part one. I don't know what that's about. Obviously he's not here for this one, so I think it was just like a coincidence or something like that, but I don't know, how crazy would it be if they allowed you to buy LR Gohan with the purple stone just because they revamped the um, Super Attack animation? That'd be pretty wild man but we'll see we'll see okay um oh number nine i almost missed it for some reason there's no picture here but uh there's gonna be a sell bingo event and uh it's a facebook campaign and that's gonna be you know more free stones or more free tickets or something like that which is never a bad thing and we also have a world tournament which is gonna be another how much is it? Usually like 40, 45, 50 stones. And we of course have the raid, the, the cell boss, raid boss that's coming soon as well in a couple days. So that is mainly part two. I gotta say part one was definitely a lot better than part two, but there is definitely a lot of stuff that we were, we could get excited about in part two as well. And as far as the total stone count goes, uh, I believe overall we're getting over 500 stones for the celebration with both both parts combined. And I mean, that's not a small amount of stones, guys. That is a pretty, pretty generous amount of stones. Uh, we have gotten more in the past. We got more for like anniversaries and such, but 500 plus is still nothing to scoff at. We could still potentially get top grossing for the uh, LR Androids banners. Now, I'm not 100% sure about that one, mainly because a lot of people seem to be not as hyped as they would have been uh, if it was an instant transmission Goku. So at this point, I don't think it's guaranteed, but there's a chance we could get more top grossing stones, maybe another like thank you um, distribution of stones as well for something just for like part two of the celebration, like thank you for another great celebration or something like that. Who knows, but definitely more stones on the way, a lot more ways to grind. And uh, if you were mad about the fact that the extremes, the area only gives six stones, the raid will be getting giving 30 plus stones. Uh, I'm pretty sure including missions, right? 30 plus, 30 from the, the stage stages itself, and then some more from missions. So basically all the stones we're supposed to get, or we should have gotten, I think for this event, will be now from the raid boss. And uh, even though I've heard people say, oh, well, we should get 30 for both. Thing is, in the past, the raid bosses never gave stones for clearing the stages. So the, the fact that we're getting 30 stones now or 30 plus stones from their cell raid boss, I think does make up, at least in some way, for the lack of stones from this extre extreme Z area thing. And uh, that's pretty much going to be my little preview or little review of the 300 million download celebration. I think overall it has been very, very good. Oh, uh, not even including the fact that we got, I think, over 100 stones for um, from the uh, special missions as well for both parts combined. So, uh, yeah, it has been pretty good, guys. I, I like the celebration so far. Um, we got a lot of ways to get stones. We got a lot of new events. And uh, with, even with the extreme Z area thing, they're trying something new. They could make changes in the future. Um, but even if you can't beat it right now, you're really frustrated with it. Just be patient, guys. Eventually, you will be able to beat it at some point. Um, don't expect to be able to beat every single event that comes out, every single new event that comes out on day one, right? Part of the fun of this game, at least in my opinion, is that um, some things will challenge you, right? And if, especially if you're not like a whale, you don't, you don't spend a lot of money on this game, um, it will take you some time to beat some things. And that's okay, man. I mean, when it comes to like Super Battle Road, like most people can't beat it within the first couple of months of playing, right? Or uh, even Boss Rush is a challenge in the beginning when you first start the game. I don't think it's as big of a deal as people are trying to make of it, but 
that's of course all my opinions. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about everything that I talked about in this video. I know it went very, very long, but I felt like it was important for me to get my opinions out there or just all these thoughts have been swirling in my mind. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video in some way. Hope you guys didn't find me too annoying, didn't find me too rambly. I'm sure I was, but uh, it is what it is. As always, if you liked the video, make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you'll like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, which is probably tomorrow, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.